Devon, a county burgeoning with ancient trades. From wool merchants spinning a profit off the backs of their moorland sheep, to woodsmen carving out a living using forestry skills. Here, time ticks to its own beat, as artisans today sustain their craft in much the same fashion as their forebears. Well, this whole job's about real history and feeling history, and the bit that really works for me is trying to get in the head of the person who made this first and trying to work out how they did it. Father and son, Mike and Greg Rowland, are master wheelwrights, forging a product that has been helping the world go round for thousands of years. Just around 25 miles east of Exeter lies the market town of Colleton, where the family have been turning out wheels since the 14th century. The trade is branded deep into their DNA. Basically, our family's been doing that in Devon since the 1300s, so I haven't got a lot of choice, really, have I? You're never going to get rich, but you've just got to love everything you do. And the day you don't, the day you've got to stop, really. The small team handcraft all manner of tackle that harks back to times gone by. And Greg's latest task is no exception. They're great looking things, aren't they? Two new steel spoked wheels for an 1860s bone shaker bike. We don't very often make them with these metal spokes, do we? No, no. Have you ever done that? Never. And you've been doing this, Never. what, 70 odd year? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a bit new for us as well. Yeah. I, I love the history of things like this and, and what, what it means. The guy who invented the bike was a real clever old stick. I'd love to go back there and see how it was then. Well, especially with the tools that they got to use, wasn't it? Did you ride one to school? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Invented in France, the Velocipede was the first bicycle to be made with pedals. A forerunner to the more famous Penny Farthing, its notoriously uncomfortable ride earned it the nickname, the Bone Shaker. We won't be starting from scratch as such because we've got this one to copy. So what we've got here is a bone shaker wheel. Normally you see them with wooden spokes, but this one has a steel spoke, so somebody back in 1860 had quite a good idea. Now with a working pattern, he can start on the hub, which connects the wheel to the frame of the bike. We've turned the hub to replicate what was in the old. You need to put two hub rings on each end, and then these lines here are where the spokes have got to go. Wood turning is a practice that has evolved over thousands of years. It's not my favorite job in the shop, but everything I do involves turning of some kind. So if I didn't have to do it again, I wouldn't be that disappointed. It may be hard work, but one thing Greg loves is getting his hands on first rate raw materials. It's not me that's made it beautiful, it's the wood that's beautiful. I've just maybe polished it and shined it up a bit, but it's nature that's done that for me. With a wealth of woodland on his doorstep, for the next piece of the puzzle, Greg's using ash source less than 10 miles away. Now, these are going to be what we call the fellows or fellies. And that's this part of wood around the outside that holds everything together. Now, obviously, they're not curved, so they'll go into this box. We're going to steam bend them. And when it comes to putting the squeeze on, Greg is happy to use a sprinkling of newfangled technology. I've got a couple of wallpaper steamers, which is the best way for me to generate steam easily. And they'll go in there for about an hour. Giving Greg time to check in with his colleague, Dave, who's been lovingly fitting each individual steel spoke to the wheel hub using tallow or sheep's fat. Now, I'll chuff for that. It looks really good. That's all right, isn't it? Amazing how close it is to a modern bike wheel, isn't it? Yeah. This guy in 1860 had some, had some nouse about him, I think. I wonder what people thought when he first came out with this bike and went, look what I've made. Bike wheels, they're really at the top. They're really hard to get right. These are probably the hardest wheels I've made for a little while. Long before the comfort of pneumatic tires made of rubber, these historic bikes were fitted with steel tires, just an inch wide, 
with the rider feeling every bump and jolt, earning the bone shaker its name. Is that it? So this is a tyre roller. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It rolls the tyres. Very local, this one, made in Exeter by Parkins, a firm still going, I believe. Uh, I think it's about 1850, one of those. It fits quite well that the bike's going to Exeter and that we're rolling the tyres in an Exeter-made machine. Sam did rugby training last night and he's hanging, so I'm making him do all the physical bits. <laughs> First session back as well. It's always the worst. Once the tyres are rolled, they're then welded into a hoop. And for Greg, the temperature is rising as the tyre is roasted in the sweltering flames, ready to be bonded. This won't take long to get hot. It's very thin steel. And we're looking for that gunmetal grey look about it. Ensuring everything comes together level is vital. Otherwise, the bone shaker won't ride in a straight line. If I lift it and it's too hot and it twists, well, that gives a twist into the wheel. If we tap it down too much in the wrong place, that gives another twist. So we want to try and avoid all of that and make life easy for ourselves if we can. And then just watch Dad watching disapprovingly if it goes wrong. Under the vigilant eye of the old master, it's important they focus and get it right. Now, either it's too loose and it doesn't go on, or it's too tight and it bends the spokes, so... It should be fine, but it's not something we do every day. Tap him round. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that, actually. The next job for Greg is to take the old wheels and parts off the bone shaker frame. That's a very old, very heavy pedal. I suppose it gives you a bit of momentum when you're spinning it. The pedals and drivetrain will be reattached to the new steel-spoked wheels. Here's your drive. They're not a standard thread, they're whatever the blacksmith cut at the time. And I find this sort of thing incredible. This is 1865, so trains sort of just beginning. There wasn't any cars, a few horse-drawn carriages and whatever. But they've made that and they've just had the foresight to get all that engineering done with whatever they had at the time. We could make it modern and that's OK if you're making something new, but because I'm restoring something that is 160 years old, if I make it all modern, then it loses a bit of its soul, doesn't it? It doesn't become what it was meant to be. Can you flush off that weld? With a few finishing touches, the bone shaker is back in business and the team can admire their handiwork. Well, hasn't it changed the look of it? Do you know what? It looks better with metal spokes in. Definitely. Yeah. It's feeling a bit special now, actually. It looks good. I could imagine you riding this, Greg. Do you think? <laughs> yeah, can you imagine with your top hat and your tails? <laughs> Evening, ladies. <laughs> but the real road test is yet to come when Greg returns the bone shaker to its owner. I'm really happy with how it's looked, and I, I do hope Mike's happy with it. I think we've been pretty faithful to how it should have looked, and actually I'm getting the feeling now that it does feel a little bit posh and a little bit... Look at my bone shaker. <laughs> Will this revolutionary bike turn back time when it takes to the road? Nearly 15 miles away near Exmouth is the beautiful Bicton Park Botanical Gardens, where Victorians came to promenade and flaunt their latest fads and fashions. It's the perfect place for the bone shaker's first road test and owner Mike is looking forward to scrutinising the results of Greg's efforts. I've been looking for years to get the wheels built and no one literally knew how they held together. It doesn't make sense engineering-wise. The actual front wheel had been in the Science Museum for two years, but they were researching it and got nowhere. So Greg has worked on it and he actually found out how it all went together. It's really lovely and, it, you know, those wheels have made a tremendous difference. You can't imagine it, you know, from what it was like. I'm really looking forward to getting it back and putting it back in the collection of old bikes. 
will the bone shaker live up to its name on its first ride out? You need a top hat, mate. A stove pipe. Yeah. Me a Sean pipe, tash like mine, he'll be away. <laughs> I think it suits him and he'll be flying on it, I'm sure. <laughs> Just don't fall off. <laughs> <laughs> the bone shaker may have been out of action for years, but Mike's soon back in the saddle. When was the last time you rode it? At least 25 years. Oh, really? Yeah. No, that was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. You got more than one or two turns out of it. Yeah. Mike makes it look easy, but Greg's feeling the strain as he tries to take her for a spin. I miss That's the pedal. Yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> oh, I was into a rhythm then. I think it's the front wheel so big. As soon as you turn the handlebars, you're, you know, it's sending you off in any kind of direction. So, obviously, he set the bar fairly high. Determined to crack the technique, he perseveres. OK. <laughs> oh, I'm going somewhere. And it's not long before he's bowling along like a true Victorian gentleman. <laughs> I tell you what, it's bloody hard work. <laughs> Greg can be chuffed that his wheelwright skills, rolled down from generation to generation, have given this historic bike a new lease of life. I very rarely get to, to have a go on what I've made. You know, I might make a gun or a carriage or a wagon, and I know they just go out of the workshop and I don't see them. And it's really good to have a go on something that I've actually made, see the job start to finish. So I think that's a job well done, and, and I'm pleased everyone's happy with it.